Hallelujah. God bless you. God bless each and every one of you. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you so much for joining us today. God bless you. God bless you. Hallelujah. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord. We thank you. We thank you, Lord God, for what you're doing today. We thank you, Lord God, for what you're doing with your people. We thank you, Lord God, that you are shifting the stories. We, really thank, we, we thank you, Lord God, that you are changing narratives. We thank you, Lord God, that you are building and tearing down. We thank you, Lord God, that you are showing us the things that we need to do, the places we need to go. We thank you, Lord God, that you are releasing unto us the very commandments that you have called us to walk in. And even when the earth is being judged by you, Lord God, we thank you, Lord God, that we're getting ready to see your merciful hand. We thank you, Lord God, that you are moving in our lives in a way that only you can. We thank you, Lord God, that even the dry places are becoming fertile again, Lord God. Even the dry ground has, has become drenched with rain, Lord God. And Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord God, that you are breaking foundational boundaries, Lord. You are breaking those things that have been hindering the people of God for years and even decades, God. God. Father God, we thank you, Lord God, that this is a time not of fear, but of joy and of restoration, Lord God. This is a time of resolution and restitution, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, that your people will be able to be to see your hand in a greater measure and that you will be able to show yourself strong even in this day. We thank you, Lord God, despite the fears of eclipse, despite the fears of CERN, despite the fears that are happening throughout the world, you alone will stand above them all. And we thank you, Lord God, that an eclipse is nothing but something that was created by you, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, that even the name CERN has nothing in comparison to the name that is above every other name. So since it is named, it cannot overcome and diminish or overcome overcome who you are, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, that you are moving according to your mighty way, according to your mighty will, and according to your power. And Father God, as we go into this message today, Father, we ask that you be with my mouth, be with my tongue, Lord God. Let the people of God hear you and not hear me. Let them move me to the side. Let them not see me, but let them hear God on the inside of me. Let them see God on the inside of me and let them not be conformed to who this is natural man is, but let them hear what you are saying to them in the spirit. Spirit. We thank you, Lord God. We honor you and we praise you. It's in Jesus' name we say amen and amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for joining us on today's broadcast. So today we are starting a brand new series. So we're starting a series today and we're actually going to go into the month of April, the next three weeks of April with it. And then in the final week of April, you're going to see that we're going to have our, our live Sunday, our live Sunday, which is going to be headed this month by I, my wife, Apostle April Ball. And we're and she's going to be bringing the women at the brook. So that's something that's gonna be a powerful time in God, something that you would, you would definitely not want to miss. So I want to make sure that you know about, <clears throat> that you know about that. You are aware of that because that's gonna be an awesome time in God. But as you can see from the title screen that I had, this, um, this month, um, the Lord impressed upon me to help prepare his people. Let me give you a bit more of a backdrop. As I was praying into this lesson, as I was praying into what God was calling me to preach this month, what he was telling me to speak on, he told me that this is a season of harvest. Even in a place of fear, this is a season of harvest. This is a season of harvest. And so I asked the Lord, can you, I asked the Lord to show me more in reference to it. And what the Lord did was he revealed these three scriptures to me. And this is, is proclaiming the harvest that is to come. Now, the first scripture I have for you is Genesis chapter 8, verse 22. So turn with me there. That is going to be our first scripture for today. It is Genesis chapter 8, verses 22. And it says, while the earth remaineth, seed time and harvest and cold and heat in summer and winter and day and night shall not cease. 
So this scripture alone tells us that we are in a place where it does not matter what is happening in the earth. As long as the earth exists, there will remain these seasons. And this is speaking not only to just seasons, but cold and heat, summer and winter, day and night. He is, is speaking in reference to the circulation of the completion of time. There is time that will continue on and time will not cease until the end of days. And that's one of the things that we must understand that as long as we are on this earth, as long as this earth remains, there will always be cold. There will always be heat. There will always be summer. There will always be winter. There will always be seed time and there will always be harvest. So there will always be a time to plant and there will always be a time for that which is planted to spring forth. Now, in reference to the seasons, you see that we have already changed seasons. We have we are coming out of what we call the winter months and we are entering into the spring season. And you see that with the change of the season, there is a change of weather patterns where it was once cold. It becomes warm where things were where the leaves were, were falling off the trees and the trees were bare. Now you're starting to see the trees bringing forth life once again and what God is saying that this is a time where we are shifting from the winter into our spring this is a time where we are shifting from a time of the seed to the time of the harvest amen the next scripture I have for you is Exodus chapter 23 verse 16 Exodus chapter 23 verse 16 and the feast of harvest the first fruits of thy labors, which thou hast sown in the field, and the feast of ingathering, which is the end of the year, when thou hast gathered in thy labors out in the field. I'm going to read that one more time. And the feast of harvest, the first fruit of thy labors, which thou hast sown in the field, and the feast of ingathering, which is at the end of the year, when thou hast gathered in thy labors out in the field. For what so what the scripture is speaking directly in reference to is in reference to the first fruits of the labors that come from the harvest. Now we are in a season where we are preparing for the harvest. The harvest has not fully arrived yet, but this is a preparation season for that harvest that is to come. And one of the things we understand about Jewish culture is that the harvest does not usually come until around the end of the year because that is around a time that the season changed. So in the Jewish culture, the Jewish culture is not like American culture. It's not like the culture that we are experiencing today. Their, their time frame is different from our time frame. So oh, the Jewish calendar has a different end of the year. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm I'm want to go ahead and and pull that up as well. Just a second. Amen. So, our end of the year is in December. The end of the year for for the on the Jewish calendar is October the second. So on October the second, twenty twenty four, that's the end of the Jewish year. So we are going to see our harvest that is getting ready to come. Not only just personally in our lives, but even in the body of Christ, there is going to be a great harvest. Just like what happens in the natural, so happens in the spiritual. So we're not only going to see a great harvest that is coming, but we're also going to see a harvest of souls that is coming. So we're going to see a natural blessings. We're going to see natural manifestations. We're going to see natural finances increasing. However, we're also going to see a massive amount of souls coming to the church a massive amount of souls coming into the understanding of who Jesus is. Amen. So because we have that understanding, we know that this is a season that we must prepare for. 
We, we have just came from a place uh, 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 of drought. We came from a place of darkness. We came from a place where things were being torn down. Many people talked about it many times this year that this is the year of exposure. Many things had to be exposed because if it's exposed, that means that the ground has been and dug up and has been opened up. Everything that was in it has been revealed. And now we are in a place where that which is exposed has been and, and and was not good for planting has been and removed and now what is good can be planted in its place so we are in a place where we are preparing for the harvest that's to come now as we get into that i'll have one more scripture that i want to quote real quick before we go oh deeper into this lesson and and, and this scripture is exodus chapter 32 verse 21 and this is good to me already. I hope that, that y'all are getting something from this. So Exodus chapter 34 verse 21 says this. Six days thou shalt work, but on the seventh day thou shalt rest. In errant time and in harvest thou shalt rest. So on the seventh day, that is the period of time where we are supposed to be in a place of rest. Many times we look at it as a Saturday, but I'm sorry, a Sunday, but in actuality, the end of the week is the Saturday. Sunday is the first day of the week. So the end of the week is the Saturday. So what it's saying here is that on the seventh day, that's the day of rest. So when they speak of the Sabbath, it's usually on a Saturday. Amen. So the Sabbath time, that is their period of rest. That is their period of uh, 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 of not having to do any work because that is the period that represents the harvest. But you understand at the beginning of time when God created it, the heavens and the earth, God created the creatures, the fowl of the uh, uh, um, air, the beast of the the beast of the earth, the fish of the sea. When He created all of these things, then He eventually created man. At the seventh day, that was when He rested because that was when that which was planted had been fully. He realized and the harvest was seen. It was not just something that was spoken. It was something that was seen. So because this harvest was in a place where he didn't just speak, he saw that it was good and everything that he set out to create was created. He was in a place of rest. And this caused the place where we were in oneness with God for the season because we were his harvest. He planted through what he said and then it sprouted up through what came forth. Because even though it was said, what he said transformed. His, what his speaking, here's what I'm saying, his speaking was in itself a seed. And then when it formulated, that was the formation of the full value of what he created. So when God spoke, it came to be. So that's something that we must understand. And on the seventh day, his harvest was fulfilled, so he rested. And just as God rested, we were supposed to rest, and we are to rest on the seventh day. So one of the reasons why I'm bringing these scriptures in reference to the harvest up is because the Lord is saying that this is the time. The time that we are in now is the time that is necessary for us to prepare for the coming harvest. Not just in our own personal lives, but even in the church. The Lord is saying that this is a time where the harvest is getting ready to come forth. This is a time where there's going to be more coming into the church than ever. This is going to be a time where there are going to be more finances coming to your households than ever. This is going to be a time where there's going to be more productivity coming into your life than ever. This is going to be a time where there's going to be more opportunities that is going to hit your doorstep than ever. But God says if you do not properly steward them, then you will fall. they will fall. If you do not properly steward them then you will miss out. There is a time coming up where these finances, there is a time coming up where the people, there is a time coming up where these opportunities are going to be necessary for the season that we are walking in. So we must properly understand what it is that God is giving us in order for us to walk in not only the promises that he has for us, but to be able to move according to his will. The Bible says that uh, he has given us the ability to receive. Well, why? Because we must establish his covenant. And he's established a covenant 
from Abraham unto us that we will be the ones who are wealthy. We will not be without. We are called to be lenders and not borrowers. We are called to be above and not beneath. And there is a time, there is a season where the enemy will try to drain us. But if we're not prepared, we will end up drained. But if we have properly prepared in the season of harvest, in the season of com the coming season, then we will be able to see that everything that at God has given us was necessary for the time that we are walking in. And now what that gets us to the point of the lesson that uh, uh, I'm starting today. With, for the next three weeks, I'm going to be talking about the harvest. And, and, and the title of it is Harvest. What to inspect when you are expecting. When I was seeking God in reference to the title of this message, one of the first things he showed me was a book. And this book was not in reference to planting in, in the normal sense, but it was in reference to pregnancy. When people get pre when women get pregnant, one of the biggest books, one of the uh, New York Times bestsellers when it comes to pregnancy is what to expect when you are expecting that is helping people see that when they are in a place of pregnancy what they need to expect out of their pregnancy what they what what, what symptoms they would have what issues they would have what, what what changes they would be feeling in their bodies what's going to happen to them that will prepare them for for what's getting ready to come out of them. When they are pregnant, they're getting ready to create, they're creating life on the inside of them. So oh, there are changes that happen in their body as they create life. And as they create life, it gets to a place where there is something that is birthed from them and it causes changes in them. It causes shifts in them. It causes, it, it causes a dynamic understanding on the inside of them that what is on the inside of them may be connected to them but they are also individualized as well and so when we understand that that we understand that that in itself, pregnancy is a type of, of, of seed. There is a seed that was planted. And then there is a time where that seed must be gestated. And what, what is given birth to becomes the harvest. So one thing you need to understand is in this harvest season. Oh, I just heard the Lord on this. There are some of you who've been waiting for so long in order to birth something in the natural. There are some things that you've been seeking God on. There are some promises that you've been waiting on God for. And you're like, Lord, what is happening? Lord, what is going on? I, I heard you. I heard you say this. I heard real prophets say this. I heard it in the word what you said that you were going to give to me. But I've waited for these past few months. I've waited for these past few years. I've waited for the past 20, 30 years. And I'm still not seeing the harvest that you said that I would have. But God is saying, get ready because the seed has been planted and I'm getting ready to birth forth your harvest. Hear what I'm saying. I want you to type that as a declaration into your own life. I'm getting ready to birth my harvest. Type that into the comments. I'm getting ready to birth my harvest. Hallelujah. So there is a harvest that God is getting out of you and God is saying that this is the time to prepare yourself. This is the time to prepare yourself because the harvest that is coming is something that has to come through you. It could have came through somebody else, but God said, I am giving it to you. I handpicked you, the Lord said, to be able to birth this thing forth. Because if I gave it to somebody else, they might mismanage it. If I gave it to somebody else, they, they may not understand it. If, they, if I gave it to, under, to somebody else, they might take advantage of it. If I gave it to somebody else, they would not understand the cost that it would take to have this thing. So the Lord is saying that I have handpicked you to carry this promise because it is for a purpose to be able to birth forth new glory that he desires to get out of you. You are glory carriers and I want you to understand that God wants to bless you because you are in the turn going to give him glory. He loves you enough to be able to bless you and you love him enough to give him the glory. And God is saying that if we continue on this perpetual 
perpetual cycle. You're going to continue to be blessed and he will continue to be glorified. So God says in this season, prepare to glorify him all the more because he has handpicked you in order to be able to manifest these things into the earth that he has called you to walk in. Amen. So the, the, the going back into my topic in reference to the pregnancy, when and I saw the title of this book, the Lord shifted the words for me. And, and I was like, Lord, what, 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 what is this? He said that it's not just about what to expect, but the Lord said it's also about what to inspect when you are expecting. So, so, so catch what I'm saying, what to inspect when you are expecting. When you expect something, that is something that you're looking for that is an outward model, something that is external that you are looking for to, for to come to you, whether it's uh, uh, something natural, whether it's something that you, you, you've been looking for for a while, with like, like if you're expecting a package, it's something that you do not have that you are looking forward to it coming to you. Or, or if you're expecting some news, it's something you don't have just yet, but you are looking for it coming to you. But inspection means it's something that you are not only, not, not only have, but it's something Something that you can tangibly handle, that you can tangibly look at, that you can tangibly work with. And when you see something being inspected, that means that it's not something that is unseen. It is something that is right there with you. It is something that you can look at in different ways, look at in different directions and look at it in different formations. And God is saying that there is something that you must inspect. In order to expect something, yes, out of what, what you have to inspect is something that will cause your harvest to either grow or die. When you're inspecting something, especially when it comes to the harvest, it is something that you, that will formulate the path of what you receive. Not, you're not only supposed to just plant seeds in the ground and then walk away and leave it forever and just wait for it to grow. You have to have that seed watered. You have to ensure that the ground is good. You have to ensure that everything is taken care of with that seed in order for it to properly grow. What happens a lot of times is we get to a place where we plant a seed and we just leave it alone. We plant a seed and we just let it go. Many times we say, hey, okay, God, you tell me to plant this seed. I plant this seed. I'm going to go ahead and give it to you. God will water the seed, but there is still a part that you carry with it. There is still a part that you carry with it. And so that's what the Lord put upon my heart for or, or me to help prepare you for. How to inspect the, what, what, what's coming to you. How to inspect the harvest that is coming. How to prepare properly for what God is placing in your hands. How to and what to inspect when you are expecting. Amen. So we are in a three-part course with this. The part, first part that I want to talk about is I want to talk about these pests. I want to talk about some pests. And I'm going to talk about what pests are and all of that in a second. But one of the things that we must understand is there are many things that will hinder us from receiving the things that God has called us to have. That there are many things that happens in, 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 when, during the time where we plant the seed in the time of harvest that can keep us from receiving the harvest that we're expecting. How many of you have been in a place where you have sought God on um, different seeds that you have planted maybe in months, maybe years ago, and yet you are not seeing any harvest? You're not seeing any changes. You're not seeing anything that shows that the things that were planted is growing. You're not showing any movement. You don't know if that seed is alive or dead. You water that thing, but yet nothing is happening. Or even if the thing has grown, it has not grown any fruit. It's shot out of fire. It's like all of your 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 harvest looks like the fig trees that, 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 that Jesus had to curse. And many times we are in a place where we're like, I, I see the leaves, Lord, but where's the fruit? I, I, I see that there is something growing, but I'm not seeing the fruit that is necessary necessary to get me on my journey and God is saying that this is a place where we not only mentally have
have to understand what it is that he's doing in our lives, but we have to be able to fully formulate. I feel you, God. Fully formulate what it is that he is causing us to bring forth out of the ground, what he's calling us to bring forth out of us. And God is saying that there are some things that we need to handle. And the first of these are the pests. So, so today's message is part one, and, and, and the title of that is Pest Control. Pest Control. Type that into the comments. Pest Control. Amen. And, and, and I'm going to read another scripture, and then I'm going to go right into it, because I don't have that much time with you. I'm going to spend about 30 minutes on this. So, so, so oh, the scripture that I have for you is Joel chapter 2, verse 25. Joel chapter 2 verse 25. I'm going to give you a chance to uh, pull that up. Joel chapter 2 verse 25 is a very familiar scripture. And that scripture says... And I will restore to you the years that the locusts have eaten, the canker worm and the caterpillar and the palmer worm, my great army which I sent you among you. I will read it one more time. And I will restore to you the years that the locusts have eaten, the canker worm, the caterpillar and the palmer worm, my great army which I sent from among you. So it speaks about four different insects. The first insect is the locust. The second insect is the canker worm. The third insect is the caterpillar. And the fourth insect is the palmer worm. Now, if you understand anything about scripture and etymology, when you look up the words in the Bible, it, it's showing you, it shows an example of different types of locusts. Now, one thing to understand is the Bible, in, in the Bible, they don't see differentiations the way that we're looking at differentiations when it comes to insects. Now, we are able to split these up into different categories. Now, one of the things that, that it spoke of was the canker worm, the caterpillar, and the palmer worm. But one of the things that they... A, they had the response of is these were all particular type of larvae because the canker worm, the caterpillar, and the palmer worm, they are all larvae, something that grows, goes through a metamorphosis and becomes something else. You see the canker worm, it, 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 it becomes a type of moth. The palmer worm becomes a type of moth. The caterpillar becomes both a type of moth as well as a type of butterfly. And one of the things we must understand is when it comes to the locust, they had no differentiation between the larvae of the locust and the larvae of the moth and the uh, larvae of the butterfly. So when they saw these different worms, they did not describe them based upon uh, what they will become. They described them based upon what they did. So if you look at many translations of it, it said that you, you will see it have the uh, definition of, instead of saying the cake worm, it says the crawling locust. Then it says the, the, the consuming locust. Then it says the chewing locusts. So there are three different types of locusts that it speaks of in that scripture. But it's all signifying the canker worm, caterpillar, and the palmer worm. So that's what I wanted to talk to you about today. So these are all, the, all three of these are known, I'm sorry, all four of these are known as pests. The locust, the canker worm, the caterpillar, and the palmer worm. Many times when we talk about church, there's there, there's a shifts that are happening and changes that are happening. We say a hey, hey, the palmer worm, the canker worm, and the caterpillar cannot take from you what God has given you. We say all of these things, we understand these things, but I want to give you a breakdown of what these actual bugs us do, not only naturally but spiritually as well. So so of course these are known as pests. Now the thing about pests Pests is pests are usually things that are not immediately noticed. So, so if you are not, if you are in a field or if you are in a garden, your your first earth instinct is not to look for pests unless you are skilled in gardening. You go throughout your garden, you see things growing, you see things moving forward, you see things that were once 
uh, um, deep in the ground shooting up and it brings you joy. It brings you happiness and you're not seeing any effects from it until you're expecting a harvest yet nothing has grown or you're expecting a harvest and it has grown but it's not grown to the uh, place where you were expecting it to or it or you're expecting a harvest and it's grown but your harvest has been eaten away has been taken away and and what God is saying that this is a season where in order for you to be able to harvest the fruit harvest the wheat harvest the things that God has given you you have to be able to pinpoint and pay attention to these little pests that will come and try to destroy the very things that God has given to you amen so the first one I want to talk about is the locust now, the locust is very familiar in scripture. Many times when you see plagues in scripture, many times when you see pandemics in scripture, it speaks directly of locusts. It talks about different times locusts are utilized in history. You, you see many times when the prophets speak about invasion, they speaks in comparing these invaders to locusts. Whenever you hear about uh, different type of plagues and pandemics, usually somewhere a locust is, is, is connected to it. And one of the things we understand is it's been utilized from Genesis on to Revelation. In Genesis, it spoke of the locusts as one of the plagues that were experienced by Pharaoh in, in, in Egypt. And this plague caused the land to go into a place of famine. Why? Because of the type of, of insects that these locusts are. Amen. So I'm going to go to the first scripture, Isaiah chapter 33, verse 4. It says this, Isaiah chapter 33, verse 4. It says, your plunder, O nation, is harvested as by young locusts. Like a swarm of locusts, people pounce on it. Amen. The second scripture I have is Joel chapter 1 verse 4 and it says this, what the locust swarm has left, the great locusts have eaten. And what the great locusts have left, the young locusts have eaten. And what the young locusts have left, the other locusts have eaten. And the last verse in reference to this is Nahum chapter 3 verse 17. And, and this scripture says, your guards are like locusts. Your officials like swarms of locusts that settle in the walls on a cold day. But when the sun appears, they fly away and no one knows where. Now, locusts themselves have been feared all throughout history. You see that it's being spoken of in such an a, a, a incredible way in, in scripture and how they talk about these swarms, how they talk about how, 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 they, how destructive they are. When it talks about even the crops are being eaten and eaten and eaten. And, and it's at a place where, you're try, where, where they were unable to reap harvest because these locusts took over everything that they had. And one of the enemies that you see in, in the harvest that God has given to you today is the locust. There are some um, um of these, these creatures that will come spiritually and take the very thing that God has called you to walk in. There are some of these beings that will try to take the very thing in that, that God has put into your life and they will destroy it. They will swarm and they will take over. So let's talk about the locusts a little bit. So locusts, we understand that they are, 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 are have been feared because of, of many reasons, but one of the biggest reasons is because how destructive they are to crops. Now, they are a creature that's related to the grasshopper, and they actually, a, 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 many times we hear about them in swarms, but they initiate a, as singular creatures. What do I mean by that? So, oh, they have different seasons. One thing I learned about the locusts is they have different seasons. They have an isolated or a solid a solidarity season. And then they have a gregarious season. There is a season where they walk by themselves. Then there is a season where they operate in a swarm. But one of the things that's interesting to understand about the locusts is that they walk in the season by themselves when, when, when it's dry, when there's dry land, when, when, when there is no fertile ground for them to eat from. They, they, they operate in this dry place. And, and when they operate in this dry place, they are not surrounded by thousands. It's them and by themselves. It's just a singular it, it's called a singularity. It's just a singular uh, locust that 
at works to try to survive on its own. Yeah, you hear what I'm saying? So, so oh, there is something that is triggered in the locust between the time of famine, between the time of dryness, and the time of plenty that will cause the locust to shift their mindset, shift their being into being in a place where they are a part of a group. And these groups come together and they search out each other. And as they search out each other, they become this large swarm. And when they find land that has rich soil, when they find land that has proper fruit, when they Found land that is producing things out of the ground, they will swarm those areas and destroy them. Where, where, where am I going with this when it comes to our natural world, when it comes to what we experience in our day-to-day -day life, when we go through what is necessary for our harvest? There are some things, and in some places, some people that are by themselves. And it looks like they will not cause you an issue as long as they're by themselves. There are some people who are, have entered into your life, who, 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 who you are connected to in a, way, a, a, in a way that they are. You see some habits, you see some things about them, but you're like, no, they, 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 this is just this one thing. It's just this one thing. I can, I can, I can get over that. And it's just this one issue, this one little issue. I can get over that. And, 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 and it's that's the only thing you see through your dry season. They might be good at so many different things in this dry season. They might be very helpful to you in, in this dry season. They might even be somebody you call friend in this dry season. It might be a job. It might be an opportunity that looks great to you in this dry season. However, when it comes to a place of fertileness, when the ground becomes fertile and ready to receive, a seeds ready to receive a produce, you will start seeing the behavior of those ones who you grew close to change. Where, where they were once at a place where uh, they were good people until and, and they only had this one issue, you start seeing multiple issues coming up, multiple things coming up. Where, where they once walked hand in hand with you, or where they once were just lightly connected with you, then they, they, their mindset changes to a place where it becomes overwhelming to you. And there are many times where we're walking in a place where we're preparing for a harvest, and there are people and things that are connected to us that uh, look good in a moment, that look like they're okay at the time of our our dryness, but as soon as we get to a place where we're walking into a harvest, that's when the issues come up. That's when the problems come up. That's when the mindset changes come up. That's when they, they, they once were good with you, but now they're mad at you. They once were good with you, but now they're tired of you. They once were good with you, now they're talking back talking bad about you. Now they're, they're, they're subjugating you to lies. They're, now they're doing all kind of crazy things. And, and, and that's what happens. The locusts come and they swallow the, the, the harvest. There are many who will try to come and take from you and try to take everything that you have, destroy your credibility, destroy your, your livelihood, destroy your finances. They will try to destroy everything that you have. And God is saying that we have to get to the place where we shift our mindset from the place of, of thinking and, and outside Thinking inside of the box and like, but we're so close to them. But 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 they were so good in this season. Many times you will see a person's true colors, and when there's a season change, hey, shout out Abaya. Hear what I'm saying? Sometimes when the season changes, you will see their true colors. You'll see how they act when they are when you're broke. But when you have money, they they act totally different. They, you see how some people act when you have money, but when you're going through a season of dryness, you see them them start to go away. Do you start seeing people when and when they are in operate in different seasons because their whole heart posture will change? Are you hearing what I'm saying? So you have to be a care be careful what you allow and who you allow in your life. John chapter 17 verse 24 says this do not judge according to appearance but judge with righteous judgment. I'm going to leave that there for it, or you so that some of y'all can catch that. Do not judge according to appearance, but judge with righteous judgment. 
but judge with righteous judgment. That means that there, there are some things that we allow into our lives because it looks good. But just because it looks good for a season don't mean it's good for every season we walk in. There are many of you who God's going to tell you to let some people and some things go before you walk into this place of harvest. Because what, what will look like a singular locust in one season will become, will, 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 will build up that serotonin on the inside of it. And it will cause them to bring others to come along. And these, these ones will come together and destroy everything that you worked on. Shut that up you. How many of you have come into a place where, where you're connected to somebody and when y'all were by yourselves, you were good. But as soon as things started shifting in your life, as soon as things started looking good in your life, they went and started uh, gossiping. They went and started attacking. They went and started communicating with other people. And then they started getting swarms of people to come against the things that you built, to come against the things that God has given you, to come against the things that God was blessing you with. God is saying this is a season where you have to allow the locusts to leave your life before they plunder the very things that God has called you to have. Amen. One of the biggest dangers that could lead to locusts is dwelling in uh, from a, in, in your or harvest in your garden is unkept land. So, so if you have different things that you are planting, you, you have different endeavors, you have different dreams, you have different visions, you have different things that God has put into your lap, that God has put into your heart, that God has put into your mind, you can't just leave it bare. Because what ends up happening is, if you leave it bare, the locusts will come in and they will start eating away at the things that you, you sown. They will start looking at the things that you have. And if you don't do anything with it, they will take from it. And you go back to it and you wonder why everything is gone. And you'll find out that the locusts have eaten it because you kept the land unkept. God says in this season, as you're preparing for your harvest, beware of the locusts. Beware of those who will bring swarms to come and attack the very thing that he has given to you. And you need to be careful to ensure that you keep the land. Make sure the land is in a good place and be careful of who and what you allow into your life. Amen. The next one is the canker worm. The canker worm. Now the canker worm, they, they, they're, they're a bit different. Because the canker worm does not operate in the same fashion as locusts. The canker worm does not operate in a place where they come in swarms. And they don't attack everything. Because locusts, they'll, they'll attack the fruit, they'll attack the vegetables, they'll attack the leaves, they'll attack all sorts of vegetation in the land. Until the land becomes barren and desolate. Now the canker worms are different. The canker worms are not initially seen. The canker worms are worms that, that function primarily when you dig deep in the ground. When, when they, they dig deep into the ground, so you're not aware of them. You don't see them. You don't see them crawling around. You don't see them on trees. You don't see them anywhere. The canker worms, they bury themselves deep in the ground. So to keep themselves sustained, what they do is they don't eat at, on the leaves. They don't eat on the fruit. They eat at the roots. They eat at the roots. So the biggest enemy, uh, oh, shine out of my, I hear you, Lord. The biggest enemy of, the, the biggest thing the canker worm will do to your crops, do to your harvest, is not your fruit. They go after the very thing that creates the plant. They don't go after the thing that comes from the plant. They go after the heart of the plant itself. If you know anything about a tree or know anything about a plant, its lifeblood is in its root. It gains nutrients and it gains water from, from, from the soil through the roots. That, yeah, that's how you know that you have good ground. If the roots spread out and stretch out into the ground so it could get more nutrients so it can get more water that's how you know that the ground itself is fertile so what ends up happening is the canker worm does not live above ground they live underground these are hidden things these are hidden things that that, that come up and, and they and what they do is they will bite away they will bite away at the root so you think your plant is looking good you might see a little bloom coming from your plant but the whole time there is something on the inside of the ground that is eating away at the root eating 
it away at the root, eating it away at the root. And over time, you start seeing, even though that plant initially started looking good, it starts withering, it starts dying, even though water is coming on, even though it's raining, even though you start, you know that the ground that you're on is good ground, you start seeing the, 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 the harvest start to wither up and die. You start seeing the fruit that, that initially started growing, started small, and it started growing and growing. And you're excited because you see this fruit growing. Then all of a sudden, this fruit that was growing begins to wither and die. And you're like, Lord, what's going on? It, the, the rain has come. You have been sending those to bless me. You have been blessing me in so many different ways. You, you, we, you put me on good ground. You put me in a ground where... where, 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 where and I can actually see life coming from the earth. However, everything that I'm planting is dying. It, it, it grows to a certain point and then it dies. And what, the, what that is called is a near success syndrome. And many times, many of us have what's called near success syndrome. That means that we're almost, we get close to success. But as soon as we get to the place of success, it seems like all hell breaks loose in our lives. And it seems like the very thing that we planted and started seeing growth from becomes to become desolate and it's destroyed. And God is saying one of the reasons why your harvest is dying and you're not able to see the fruit come from the harvest that he has given you is because they have been canker worms. That have buried itself and eaten at the roots that God has given you. It's shot up by it in here. And there are some roots that you need to be able to say before you're able to say that you're going to be able to walk in harvest. Because harvest season is a great season. However, harvest season is not a good season for everyone. Because there are some people who do not manage their garden. They shout out by their spiritual garden. There are some people who do not manage the things that God has given them. Sometimes God gives people words. And the first thing that they do is they start telling their friends about the word. They start talking about the word. They start putting their word on Facebook. They start uh, uh, shouting to everyone everybody about the word and then there are those who walk in doubt there are those who do not believe and there are others who understand and believe but they work in something called witchcraft and in this place called witchcraft they come against the very thing that God said that he was going to bless you with God said he's going to bless you with a car but if he blesses you with a car you will no longer be dependent on that person who took you to work every single day are you hearing what I'm saying and you tell that person that been you've been dependent on it that you're getting ready to get a car the lord said you're going to get a car but that person needs you because your dependency makes them dependent and they feel like if they lose you then they won't have anything so what they do is they work into a place of witchcraft and they start coming against the very car that god called you to have because they don't want you to have a car because they want you to continue to depend on them there are some people who god gets to a place where they're going to be able to walk in a realm of joy and happiness and then you tell the wrong friend that you're getting ready to a walk in joy. You tell the wrong friend that you got a prophetic word in reference to something that's getting ready to bless your life in such a great way. But the only way that friend feels comfortable being your friend is if you're in a place of depression and you stay in a place where you are in a downward spiral. So they can be const constantly be in a place where they're helping you, where they're building you because that makes them feel good about themselves. And what ends up happening is they begin to curse the very word that you have. These are canker words you may not see it because these are friends who will shout hallelujah in your face but use witchcraft behind your back. Yes, shout out of Aya. These are the friends who come around and they always clapping. They always doing all of this. And, and, and then as soon as you turn your head, they, 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 they're, they're shouting you down. They're tearing you down. They're breaking you down and, and saying all kind of curses against the blessings that God has put upon your life. Yes, shout out of Aya. Grab a These are the ones who are, who are never around when you're being a blessed, but they're always the first to comment on your statuses when you're going through situations. Situations. These are the canker worms. I'm talking about the canker worms right now. These are the ones who every time there's something bad that happens into your life, they're always egging you on. They're always saying things that makes you more and more sad. They are say always saying things that put you in a place of doubt. They're always saying things that make you more depressed. They're always saying things that never helps you, but they only tickle your flesh. And God is saying that he is revealing these canker worms in your life because in order for you to care 
carry the harvest that he's called you to have. You have to get these creatures that are breaking in up your roots out of your life. My God, my God. So one thing that you need to do in this season is you need to ensure that you are watching this harvest closely. You, 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 can't, you, you can't see a canker worm usually because they bury itself deep in the ground. So sometimes you have to dig in the earth. It's shot and notable shot. You have to dig in the earth. You can't leave your harvest alone and expect it to grow by itself. Sometimes you have to dig and make sure there's nothing surrounding your, 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 your harvest, your fruit, your, your vegetables. That would cause it to die. And if you start seeing these canker worms, guess what you have to do? You have to relocate the root. Somebody type that into the comment. You have to relocate the root. That means that if there are a bunch of these canker worms that have surrounded your, your, your harvest, surrounded the seed that you planted into the ground, you have to relocate it so that the very thing that was trying to eat away at it no longer has access to it. It's Shandarabaya. So the Lord is saying there are many of you who have to inspect every connection that you have. You have to inspect every opportunity that you're given. You have to inspect to see what's real and what's authentic and what's fake and what's counterfeit. You have to be able to see exactly what it is that you are enduring, what it is that you are going through, what it is that might hinder your harvest, that might hinder your walk with God, that might hinder what God is calling you to walk in and you have to cut it off and you have to relocate it. You have to relocate the, the, the seed. And, 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 and you might be like, All right, but Lord, if I relocate it, what if it dies? But God says that it's better for you to relocate your seed and place it on firm soil without these canker worms nearby than for you to leave it and let the very seed be destroyed by the ones who, who say that they're for you, but they're truly eating away at the harvest that God has given you. So God says you will have to relocate the roots. We see in Genesis chapter 12, verse 1 and 2, God talks to Abram and says, Get out of your country, get from your family, and from your father's house to a land which I show you. And yes, sometimes the canker worms can come from your own family. And the Lord is saying that he wants him to go to a land which I will show you. The reason why is because these were canker worms. They would not have been connected to him in a way that God wanted him to be connected to them. These would not be ones who would be able to benefit him and where God was taking him. These would not be ones which would have let him lead if God allowed them to go. These are the ones who would have tried to come against what God called him to do. Because why? We understand that that that, that Abram's father attempted to go to this place called Canaan, but he could not leave, he, he could not he could not make his journey and complete his journey to Canaan. So he had to dwell in the land that they lived in for the rest of his life. And we understand that many times if Abram would have allowed others to go with him, they, they, they would have reminded him of what his father could not do. They would have reminded him of who where he came from. They would have reminded him of his past. They would have reminded him of what he came out of. They would have reminded him of the other gods they served. They shot out of fire. Run, ba, 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 shit, did they hear? Because we understand, we understand that Abram came from a family of polytheistic uh, uh, people. And these were ones who did not just serve one God, they served many gods. And so if he allowed these family members to come on a journey, they would have said, yes, I understand the Lord told you to do that. But this God says this, but this God says that, but this God says that. And there would have been too many stories. And God is not the author of confusion. And he would never have been able to enter into the place that God was calling him to in a place of confusion. Many times the canker worms in your life is causing confusion to everything that you know that you're supposed to have and know that you're meant to have. However, because you're allowing them to stay in your life, they're continually eating at the roots while you stay in the state of confusion. God said, not so. So right now in the name of Jesus, if you have any canker worms in your life, anything that has dug itself into the roots and began eating away at the things that is planting itself in your life. Right now, in the name of Jesus, we tear down 
any canker worm coming against the promise and the harvest over your life. And if you must relocate, whether it's spiritually or naturally, God says do it. Do it and do it quickly. Because the quicker you relocate, the quicker you can walk into your harvest. My God, my God, my God. I'm going to the next one. And then I have one more after that one. And I'm going to leave you guys. And, and this one is the caterpillar. This is the caterpillar. And, and, and now the caterpillar is the one that you have to be careful with. The caterpillar is one of the ones you have to be careful with. Because one thing about the caterpillar is that in their larval state, they, they can be destructive, but if you let them grow, and if you and if you properly if you properly harness them, if you properly put them in their proper place, they can grow into something that will not hinder but help. So so it, well, let me explain. One thing about the caterpillar is that uh, that that the caterpillar they don't go into the roots and they don't even go after the fruit the majority of the time. The majority of the time the caterpillar eats away at the leaves. They eat away at the leaves on the plants. And even though uh, most times people will say, well, they're not going after my fruit. They're going after the leaves, so it's fine. But that's not fine. Why? Because in order for the fruit to grow, the leaves need to be full. The leaves need to be full in order for fruit to grow. Why? Because the, the, the leaves themselves are what's necessary in order to gather light from the sun. So this process called photosynthesis is generates light from the sun to use and create as a food source for the, for, the, for the plants. And one of the things we must understand is every plant that God has given on this green earth requires leaves in order to eat, requires leaves in order to fully grasp what it is that is called to grow. And if the, and if the caterpillar and these, the, these caterpillars are called to crawl on them and, and, and chew away that, that's what was called the, 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 the consuming. They were called the chew away at the leaves. Then there is nothing that will be able to reflect light for the plant. So it could not grow. It could not uh, be beneficial. Now the thing about the caterpillars is the caterpillars, they, they don't eat that much. They're, they're, they're not as harmful as the locusts. They're not as harmful as the canker worm. But the caterpillar, they will eat away at the leaves and they could cause a lack of growth for a season. But the thing to understand about the caterpillar is you need to learn how to not only tame, but you need to learn how to uh, limit the amount that you allow in your garden. They are not meant to be totally removed from your garden, removed from the area God has called you to build, removed from the vineyard, but they are called to be limited. Why? Because what ends up happening is if you are in a place where you, you allow some of these caterpillars into your life for a season and, 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 they're, and they're there and they're eating away and sometimes it seems like fruit is dying, fruit is dying, but you're like, but the Lord told me to connect with you. The Lord told me to uh, help you. The Lord told me to build you. The Lord told me to benefit you. There will be a season where that caterpillar turns into a butterfly. When that caterpillar turns into a butterfly that it will no longer eat away at the leaves what it will do is it will begin to uh, pull the pollen from the flowers so once it gets to a place where it, once it gets to a place where the caterpillar or changes or goes through the metamorphosis and, and it come, becomes a butterfly, you begin to see that it will pull on the flowers and it will allow the pollen from one flower to go to another flower, which will cause more to grow. So the very thing that initially began to eat away at your plant will begin become something that will help your plant to go, grow. So it's important to understand that there will be some caterpillars in your life. There will be some caterpillars in your vineyard. There will be some caterpillars in your on your journey. And what ends up happening is a lot of times we see them eating. We see them taking from us. We see them draining us. But we need to have the discernment to know the difference between the canker worm and the palm worm and the caterpillar. Because if you see a caterpillar, that means that they might be destructive for a season.
season, but there will also be a season where they will benefit you. God is saying there are many in your life that is draining you, that is taken from you. But if you trust the Lord and if you trust what God is doing on the inside of them, he will shift them to be able to become something that will bless you in your season of plenty. So when you get to the place of harvest, they will be able to shift from this caterpillar stage to a butterfly and where they want at one time was harming what God gave you. They will become a helper to what God has called you. I want to declare and decree this into your life. The very ones that have been eating away at your fruit are going to become your helpers. Hear what I'm saying. The very ones that were tearing you down is going to be the ones that's going to build you up. But you have to tell the difference between those who are caterpillars and palmer worms. You have to be able to tell the difference to, between those who are caterpillars and canker worms. And God is saying that if you understand the difference between the palmer worm, the canker worm, and the caterpillar, you will be able to understand who is destroying you and who will be able to come and help you. Amen. So, so, so oh, one thing to understand is that caterpillars, they're, 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 during their life cycle, it only lasts a few weeks. The life cycle of the caterpillar stage only lasts a few weeks. So it's only a temporary thing. But, but, but one of the things to understand in reference to the caterpillar is that they can and become destructive or they can become a benefit to you. But it depends on the season that you're in. There are some times where we just reach the right person at the wrong season. And because uh, we're in the wrong season, we only see the negative. We only see the evil. We only see the bad. But God is saying if we are able to trust and believe that there's more to this one than just them eating away at the leaves, they will be able to grow and benefit you and be able to help grow the harvest that God has called you to have. But these are not the ones who will eat away at the roots. These are not the ones who will tear you down. These are the ones who may need your help sometimes. These are the ones who, who are good people, have a good heart, but sometimes they may drain you financially. Sometimes they may drain you emotionally. Sometimes they may drain you even physically. But the Lord is saying that uh, these are the ones that he will give you the discernment to understand and comprehend who they are. They, they will be the ones who, even though they take from you now, they will benefit you later. So God says, have patience with them as they grow, because as they grow, they will become a benefit. Amen. Amen. And I'll give you a scripture to remind you of, of something that could have been considered a, 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 a caterpillar situation. Uh, and that's Genesis chapter. Let, let's start with Genesis chapter 40. And I'm going to read verse 13 through 15. Then I'm going to read 21 and 23. Then I'm going to skip to chapter 41, and I'm going to read verse 9 through 12. So I'm starting off again with Genesis chapter 40 and verse 13 through 15. Genesis 40, 13 through 15, and it says this. Now within three days, Pharaoh will lift up your head and restore you to your place. Now this is Joseph talking to the cupbearer while he's in the prison. And you will put Pharaoh's cup in his hand according to the former manner when you were his butler. But remember me when it is well with you and please show kindness to me. Make mention of me to Pharaoh and come get me out of this house. For indeed, I was stolen away from the land of the Hebrews. And also I have done nothing here that they should put me into this dungeon. Verse 21 says this. And he then he talking about the Pharaoh restored the chief butler to his butlership again, and he placed a cup in Pharaoh's hand. Verse 23, yet the chief butler did not remember Joseph, but forgot him. Now we see that the butler was in a place of being dismayed and distraught because he was in a prison. He was in a place where he was not where he used to be. He used to be somebody great. He used to be somebody amazing. He used to be right next to the Pharaoh pouring wine into his cup. However, he was placed in prison for some unknown reason. And the reason, and while he was in prison, he was going through and he had these dreams, just like the baker had these dreams. And he Dependent and he pulled from Joseph in order to interpret these dreams for him. And Joseph said, this is your dream, but this is what I need from you. I need you to remember me. 
I need you to remember me when God when and God pulls you up from from this place that you're in and you're back at the side of Pharaoh and and and, and you're pouring cup into pouring wine into his cup again because I don't belong here. So remember me in this time. And we understand that Joseph uh, interpreted the dream correctly and uh, and what he interpreted came true. However, during this time, we see that the chief butler did not remember Joseph. So we might, at times, we may get upset. At times, we may get frustrated when the people that we helped aren't helping us. Where the people that uh, we he built up, we strengthened, we may have financially poured into, they get raised up and they don't come back and help us. And, and, and we might get upset f and frustrated financially. We may have uh, even given somebody a loan and then and we he tell them to pay us back and they say they want to pay us back, but, but they never do. We might get frustrated because of that, but the Lord says don't allow such things to frustrate you and walk in patience because even though you don't see the blessing then, God will ensure that you receive the blessing and and in due time and one of the things that we see is in Genesis chapter 41 the next chapter over verse 9 through 12 it says this then the chief butler spoke to Pharaoh saying I remember my faults to this day when Pharaoh was angry with his servants and put me in custody in the house of the captain of the guard both me and the chief baker we each had a dream one night, he and I, each of us dreamed according to the interpretation of his own dream. Now there was a young Hebrew man with us there, a servant of the captain of the guard. And we told him and he interpreted our dream for us. To each man he interpreted according to his own dream. So this very one who pulled from Joseph in the season, now this is a whole two years later. <clears throat> this is all two years later in the life of Joseph. So Joseph was still in that dark place. Joseph was still in that prison place. And there was this person who was a caterpillar to him. He ate from the leaves that Joseph had. Are you catching what I'm saying? He ate from the leaves that Joseph had. And then he left. And he went on his way. And, and two years later, he remembered Joseph. And Joseph was in the time where he was in the prison. But now, because he was remembered by the butler, he was placed in a place where he had an opportunity to speak to the Pharaoh, which led to him not only just having a place with Pharaoh, but becoming the governor of many of, of the lands of Pharaoh, which allowed Joseph to bring the people of Israel you know, into Israel. Egypt because they were going to a place as come, coming from a place of famine. And we understand that because Joseph allowed this cupbearer to be able to, to and interpret it for him and gave him the interpretation. And even though he did not initially remember him, in due time he remembered him and that led him to bring his people into a land called, guess what? Goshen. A land that was fertile. A land that was ready for harvest. Amen. Amen. So it's important to understand there are some caterpillars that might be in your life. Some people who will pull from you and leave you. Don't get mad at them. Don't get frustrated at them because God will, uh, in due time, allow them to remember you or cause them to remember you. And then you will be able to reap harvest from them once again. There are many people who God said has forgotten you who's getting ready to remember you again. There is a lot of people that you may have helped in past seasons and they discounted you, but God's going to turn their heart for you once again. Watch what God is getting ready to do in the coming days. God said that I'm going to cause those who forgot to remember once again. Amen. Amen. Now, this is my last one. And I will leave you for today. The palm worm. The palm worm. Amen. So we talked about the locusts. They destroy everything. We talked about the canker worm. The canker worm itself, they, they, they go after the roots. They go after the roots. We understand the caterpillar. They go after the leaves. The caterpillar goes after the leaves, but the caterpillars have room for growth because even though they go after the leaves, they can help you plant and grow your harvest later. And now we have the palm worm. The palm worm, the, 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 the biggest thing about the palm worm is, is that they chew away at the fruit. The palm worm chew away at the fruit. So we have one that goes after the roots. We have one that goes after the leaves. Now the palm worm goes directly after the fruit. So they don't wait. They, they, they don't go oh, oh for the roots. They don't go for the, the, the leaves. 
the leaves. They go directly for the fruit. Once the fruit fully develops, they go after the fruit. The important thing about that is the palmer worm goes after what is left. What is left alone. If God has allowed you to develop fruit, if you leave that fruit alone, these are the ones who will go after it and eat away at it. If God has called you to walk into a place of harvest, if you do not properly keep your harvest, these are the ones who will eat away at it. And one thing to notice about these, these palmer worms, they feed on apples and other fruit trees. And, they, they, and so they're not discriminate, discriminatory regarding to what they eat. And one of the things about them is that they, they, they hide themselves amongst weeds. And they wait for the opportune time for the fruit to fully develop, for them to eat from the fruit. Are you hearing what I'm saying? It's just like it's just like when you have the wheat in the tear, when you have the the fruit that's coming out of the ground, but it's surrounded by weeds. Now, now you see that the that 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 the palmer worm don't mess with the weeds. They just live among the weeds. They live among the weeds and they buy their time in places where there are weeds in order to wait for your fruit to develop. And before you're able to gather your fruit, they go after the fruit and they eat from the fruit. So by the time you get to it, your fruit is gone. Mm, mm, mm. Are you hearing what I'm saying? You may be like, Apostle, what does have, that, that have reference to do with my life? God is saying that many of you have, have, have weeds that have grown up among your field. Because one thing to understand is fertile ground does not just have, have fruit trees. It does not just have wheat that grow up. It also allows weeds to grow up as well. When, it's, when the ground is fertile, it does not always mean good. Fertile ground also can lead to weeds if you grow the wrong thing or if you allow the wrong things to stick around. If you allow the wrong things to stick around, the weeds can grow up among the fruit. And the weeds will sometimes choke the fruit. They can destroy the fruit and choke the fruit and, and cause the, the vine itself to die. Or... It could allow these pests called palmer worms to dwell among them that will wait until the fruit is ready and then they will leap onto the fruit themselves. They, they, they bide their time. These are not the ones who will eat away at the leaf. They, they wait. They are, they are patient insects. These insects are the ones who don't bother you when, when, when the plant is, it is barely sprouting forth. They don't bother you when, when you start seeing the stem. They don't bother you when you start seeing the leaves. They bother you once the fruit hits. And there are many who will come. People, opportunities, things, finances. There's, and because it's not just people that I'm talking about. It could be things that drain your finances. It could be some things. Dig up, for, for instance, some people have their wages garnished because something happens. And, and their wages are garnished because it waits until you make a certain amount of money for them to garnish these wages and take these wages from you. One of the things to remember is that they bide their time and wait until the fruit looks good enough to eat for them to eat. They're, they're one of the more dangerous ones outside of, of course, the locusts. They're so dangerous because the thing about it is they don't even dwell among the fruit. They wait in the weeds. They wait in the weeded area. Until the fruit is ready. And if you don't properly keep your garden. When it's time for harvest season. The palmer worm will get to that fruit before you. And the very thing that you want to eat. The very thing you want to partake in. The very thing that you want to take to your family. You will have been robbed of. Because you allow weeds to grow up among your fruit. Now, there's a difference between weeds and fruit and weeds and wheat. Biblically, you know that, that weeds and wheat, they can grow up among each other. And there are times where the weeds can help the wheat grow. But then there is a, a season of separation, the threshing floor, where the weeds are, are pulled away from the wheat so the wheat can continue to grow. Amen. But when it comes to fruit, weeds have no benefits to fruit. 
The only thing that weeds will do to a fruit is it allows, it takes nutrients that the fruit could uh, utilize, for that the fruit plant could utilize, the vegetable plant could uh, utilize. And it also take, takes away a, um, the vital, it takes away the not vital nutrients as well as they will allow these pests to dwell among it. So what do you need to do? You need to sift the plants. You need to remove the bad fruit and sift the weeds out of your life. What are weeds? What is not productive? This shot not a buyer. What, what, what are you doing? What, what is happening in your life that is not producing anything? These things just shoot up. These things just grow up. And they're not producing anything. They're not being productive to you. They're not being productive to your family. They're not being productive to what God calls you to do. They're not being productive to giving glory to him. These are just things that are just sticking up in your life. And you don't deal with them. They continue to grow. They continue to grow. And then eventually when you start growing some type of fruit, they will either strangle it or the bugs that have been living in them will come upon the fruit and destroy it. So what's necessary in order for you to walk in the place that God is calling you to in your harvest season, you have to pull the roots up of the wheat. I'm sorry, pull the roots up of the weeds and burn them. Burn these out of your life. Use the fire of the Holy Ghost to burn these things out of your life. These things that are not producing. These things that are just there and they're not benefiting you. You need to pull these weeds up and burn them. Because God said if you allow them to stay, the palm worms will come and eat the fruit. And they will be able to benefit on the things that you were supposed to benefit from. Amen. Amen. So the Lord is saying that this is a season where we must prepare for this harvest. This harvest that is coming. And everything that I'm saying, I'm not just putting a natural spin to it. It's also a spiritual spin spin to it. There are also locusts that are coming after uh, the harvest of souls. There are also caterpillars that are coming after the harvest of souls. There are also palmer worms that are coming after the harvest of souls. There are also canker worms that are coming after the harvest of souls that are coming. We must be prudent. We must inspect our crop in order for us to allow these, these fruit to be able to come in, in order to allow this harvest to be fully cultivated and received. And if we don't do that, then we could lose the very thing that God has drawn to us. This is the season where we must prepare for the harvest that's to come. And in order for us to properly prepare for the harvest that's to come, we must inspect to ensure that we are not allowing pests to come into our garden. So, Father God, in the name of Jesus, we repent for tolerating any sins in our lives that we watched our grandmothers, our grandfathers, our fathers, our mothers, our aunts, our uncles, everyone else who tolerated and passed down to us. Father God, in the name of Jesus, anything that is not like you, we tear up from the root. Now, in the name of Jesus, any weed, we tear it up from the root. And we thank you, Lord God, that you are exterminating every canker worm, caterpillar, and, and palm worm that does not belong in the garden. You are keeping the ones that belong there. And we are thank and we thank Thank you, Lord God, for giving us the patience to deal with what you're allowing to stay there because we understand that there are some that might help us in the days to come. Father God, we thank you, Lord God, that you, we, you're calling us to be patient. You're calling us to understand. You're calling us to be watchful, to be diligent, to be able to see the ones that you're calling the palmer worms, the ones that you're calling the canker worms, the ones you're calling the caterpillars, Lord God, the ones you are calling the locusts, Father God. We Thank you, Lord God, that we are able to inspect what you are giving us so that when we receive the harvest, we may not only just walk in places of, of joy, but we'll be able to walk in places of plenty. We thank you, Lord God, that it is our portion to receive what you have called us to receive. And anything that is trying to keep us from walking in that is, is null and void and must be removed. We love you, Lord God. We honor you, Lord God. We thank you, Lord, for what you are doing doing in our lives. We thank you, Lord God, that you're shifting us in the place that we need to go. It's in Jesus' name we say amen and amen and amen. Hallelujah. I want to thank you guys for joining us today's on today's broadcast. I hope that this blessed you.
because there are pests in the garden that will keep you from operating in the place of harvest that God is calling you to. And I guarantee you, if you inspect your garden and find those little things and get rid of them, you'll be able to receive a more bountiful harvest when that harvest season has arrived. Amen. Now, before I let you go, I want to go ahead and give you an opportunity to sow. Oh, I'm going to place my giving information upon the screen. If you can be a giver, we are good soil. We are good ground. And I guarantee you, just as you sow into us, the canker worms and the caterpillars and the scorpions cannot come against the very thing that God has given to you as well. Amen. So, so we're fertile ground and God will bless you. So our giving information is as follows. You can discard the Zelle. Our, our main information for giving right now is Cash App TBP Houston. That's Cash App dollar sign TBP Houston. Amen. Amen. So, oh, if you would, if you would like to give, you can give to us that way. And if you need any other method to give, just uh, message us and we'll, and we'll be able to try to incorporate another way of giving as well. But our primary way of giving is through Cash App, dollar sign, TBP Houston. Amen. And, and I thank you so much in advance for every gift that you who will give to us. Amen. So if you're watching this live, if you're watching this on a replay, I, I, I admonish you to have somebody come and watch this as well, because this is something that's going to help shift the trajectory of your harvest and the harvest of those that you're connected to. Because many times we consider that the harvest is coming, but we don't properly deal with the pests that try to uh, take away our harvest before we're able to reap it. And now you'll know what's necessary to inspect in order to prevent prevent that from taking away from what God has given us. Amen. Again, I want to thank you guys for joining us. I bless you. I bless you. I bless you again. I want to leave you guys with the knowledge that there is that, that there is more on the horizon, on the way for you. What you're seeing with CERN, what you're seeing with the eclipse, what you're seeing with all of these things. Don't let these things frighten you. Don't let these things scare you. Because the Lord said that even after this, I am bringing more into your storehouse. So God bless you. I pray that you have a great week. And bye for now.